This lesson is modified from Chapter 4 from Photoshop Classroom in a Book, CS5. Um, in your Lesson Files folder, you have a number of different fo files that we're going to use for this project. Right now, we want to just start with two of them. We want to start with the beach and the start image. So I clicked on one, hold down Control and click on the other, so then I can drag and drop them in there as two separate tabs. Now the start image, you can see there are a number of different layers already there. Layers in Photoshop aren't that different than layers in Illustrator uh, in that they're just objects that are one stacked on top of the other. Now in Illustrator, each layer acts as a folder containing paths. There are folders here in Photoshop layers, but for the most part, you'll just use these layers all stacked up like this. Several of them are invisible. There are little eyeball icons that we can click on to show and hide our different layers. Now what's nice about layers um, now in Photoshop is that um, you don't have to make a selection of an object if you have an object by itself. So our last lesson we took objects and we selected them and moved them around because we had a flat image. Well, if you have an object by itself on a layer, you don't have to make a selection. You can just get the Move tool and you can move that object around. Now we have several uh, objects here right now, and I'm going to drag in a new object, to, uh, which will create a new layer, and I want it to be above the pineapple but below the flower. Okay, And that's going to be the beach that we opened at the same time as this image. So I'm going to go to my Organize Windows button here, my Arrange Windows button, and click on Two Up so I can have both files open at the same time. So I'm going to take the beach and I'm going to drag it and then drop it into my goal image, or I'm sorry, my, uh, my canvas that I'm working on. So close that beach tab and we've got an image here for us to work with. Now it drops it in immediately on top of the layer that I was on. I was on the pineapple layer and it dropped it in there. I want to rename that. I'm going to double click on the word layer 1 and rename it to beach. It's important to keep our layers organized when we're working with a lot of different layers. Now I want to do some things to this beach layer. So I'm actually going to turn off um, everything except for the layer that I'm working on, the beach layer. And uh, one of the things I want to do is put a special effect on it, and that's going to be a stroke. You're familiar with strokes, meaning outlines, from Illustrator. So to get these layer styles, I'm going to double click on this empty space, and I get a listing of different layer styles. We're going to come in back to this box a few times um, as we learn Photoshop, but we're going to go down to Stroke, and we click on the word. We can just click on the checkbox, but to actually control it, we have to click on the word, and um, by default, it gives me a black outline, just like Illustrator would. I'm going to bring that size up a little bit, and I'm going to change the color of this to white. I just clicked on the color there and then changed it to white. And the position, just like Illustrator, I can position the stroke outside, inside, or center. I'm going to position this one inside. These other controls, you can. Uh, we're going to learn about blending modes elsewhere, so uh, in the future you can use them, but right now we're not going to... Uh, use them at this point in this lesson. So go ahead and click OK and you've got a photograph with this nice white border that kinda looks like um, a, you know, a snapshot printed out or a postcard. Now we want to um, actually reorganize this a little bit yet still so I'm gonna bring back all of my layers and I'm gonna take that beach picture and just like I can move it without a selection I can now hit control T without making a selection. So I'm going to rotate that object a little bit, and I'm going to shrink it down. Remember, Control T stands for a transform, so we're transforming the object. And then it just looks like it's casually tossed in our area, and we hit Enter to apply. If your beach photo is in the wrong place, you can always just drag that icon or drag that uh, layer and move it around inside your layers panel. Uh, and reorganize it. This is just like reorganizing layers in Illustrator, though we didn't do it as often as Illustrator as you will with Photoshop. Now also a little bit different than Illustrator, we had a transparency panel in Illustrator that allowed me to change blending modes and opacity. I'm going to go up to the postage layer up here and I'm going to lower the opacity. Instead of having a separate panel, it's all right here in the layers panel. So you can see it becoming lighter out here in the work area. 
where it says normal. These are my blending modes, which we practice a little bit before in Illustrator, but we're going to use them a lot more in Photoshop. I'm going to pull that down and go to multiply. And that compares the pixels there down below and does an interesting special effect. It's difficult to see on the postage stamp, but it does make some of that postage stamp um, sort of uh, stand out. Let's use those blending modes in a place where it's going to be a lot more obvious. So I'm going to turn off all of the layers except for the pineapple and the background. And I want a copy of that pineapple, so I'm going to click on pineapple and I'm going to drag it to the new layer icon so I have two copies, one pineapple on top of the other. The top one's a copy and it tells you by putting it in the layer name, pineapple copy. And uh, we're going to use these blending modes and I'm actually just going to flip through these so you can see the different ones and what they do. They compare the pixels that are down below with the pixels that are on top and do different special effects. Um, so some of them get kind of crazy and funky like um, these here are getting a little saturated, hard mix especially, a little bit funky here. And you won't always uh, use these with uh, the same picture one on top of the other. Oftentimes it'll be two very different pictures. But if I pull this down and just go to overlay, you can see that my pineapple looks a lot better in this case. So here's my original pineapple, a little bit grayish, fine picture, I can tell what it is. But it becomes more vibrant with the overlay. My shadows are darker, my highlights are brighter, and the color is brighter too. So with that done, our poster is really coming along here. But there's some more that we can do to make some of these things really pop and stand out. I'm going to turn all the layers off except for the background. And I'm going to click on the background. I want to create a new blank layer right on top of the background so I can paint on it. So I'm going to press the new layer icon while I'm on the background and I get a blank layer. I know it's blank because I have the gray and white checker box, which means blank or invisible. And I'm going to choose a uh, blue color to go into, um, into this, uh, this new layer. And I'm going to type in some numbers to get a specific color. Uh, we've practiced using the sliders before to choose a, um, different colors, but we can actually tell Photoshop we want a very specific color using numbers. So there's, there's, we can do hue, saturation, and brightness here, or lab color. We're familiar with RGB and CMYK at this point in our course. And then also, if you work in web, there's the hexadecimal colors here. So we're going to deal with RGB because that's our color mode and it's what we're most used to. So I'm going to make red 48, my green I'm going to set at 138, and my blue I will set at 174. And I get a nice sort of bluish color that's not too saturated. My background color is white. So then when I go to filter and I go to render, go to clouds, I get this nice blue and white sky field, um, which will be a nice backdrop. Now if I were to do that again, filter, render, clouds, it'll create a new uh, field of clouds for me. Every time you do it, it'll create something slightly different. So as I bring all of my layers back on, I can see that that blue looks really great against the pink flower and the uh, green and yellow pineapple and really makes everything stand out really well. So let's continue on improving our poster here. I want to turn off some of the less important details that we haven't touched too much yet, the postage and the Hawaii. And I want to learn a little bit about smart objects. So I've pulled on my little file explorer here, and I have the file flower2.psd. And I'm going to drag that in, and I'm going to drop it right onto the canvas that we're working on. And you'll see that it creates a file. Now, I was on the clouds layer, um, the layer that we created the clouds. We'll have to rename that in a second here. Um, so it pops that flowers2 right on there. But it puts this X on this. This X indicates to me that this is a linked file, a special linked file called a smart object. So I place it by pre pressing enter on my keyboard and it's now in there. Now let's do some maintenance here on our layers. I said that I wanted to rename clouds, layer one to clouds, we can do that. And then we're gonna take that flower and we're gonna drag it up above the pineapple. Let's actually drag it up above the beach too so we can focus on it. Now, there's this little icon in the lower right-hand corner of the thumbnail in the Layers panel, and that tells me that this is a smart object. A smart object is a linked file, so this file is actually linked back to this file here. In fact, if I open this, it's gonna, it can open as a separate file, and I can do some changes to it. 
okay? And I'm not sure that this will work quite right, but if I go to File, Save, and I go over here, normally it would update that to also be blue. I found that my, my video recording software here actually doesn't, it keeps it from updating for some reason, whatever reason. Uh, but let's undo that painting, go to my history panel, and save it back. Uh, but the point is, is that this is linked to that file and I can make changes to it and it'll automatically update. Now sometimes that's nice. Now what I can also do is I can shrink this down and then decide later maybe I need to make it actually back to original size and it doesn't lose quality. If I did that with a different layer, like say the flower layer here, um, it would lose quality. Let me show you. Control T and I'm going to shrink that down and then decide later, control T, I want it bigger, and now this thing is blurry, okay, because I've destroyed some of the pixels um, that I had used before. So let me go back through there in the history. Oh, I shrunk down my smart object again. Let's make that bigger. So that's why a smart object is nice, but smart objects can also be frustrating for the beginner. They make your file size bigger. They also um, sometimes it confuses people when they can't uh, paint on it or they can't do a filter on it. Um, they can't do certain things to it because you can't edit the object directly. So most of the time for the beginners, what I want you to do is you're going to right click where it says Flowers 2 and you're going to go to Rasterize Layer. And it's not a smart object anymore. Now if I were to shrink it down, it's going to lose quality. But at this time I can go ahead and do image adjustments to it. I can do filters and I can paint it just like a normal object, which I think is easier for a beginner. Let's finish this up by doing a little bit of work with some text. So I'm going to bring back postage, bring back Hawaii, and I'm going to put a gradient on the word Hawaii. I'm going to make it kind of an orangish, bright orangish gradient. That looks pretty good. Now, right now, if I were to paint a gradient, the gradient would actually paint over the entire layer. Oops, I wasn't even on the right layer. I'm on Hawaii. It'll paint over the entire layer. Obviously not what I want to do. Um, I want to um, get some uh, a selection around those letters. So I can right click on the thumbnail and go to select pixels and I've got my dancing or marching ants around the word and I can start down here, drag to the top, and now I've got um, a nice selection of the letters and with the uh, orange to white gradient on it. Control D will let me deselect. Now I'm going to switch my color to uh, sort of a bright lime green and I'm going to use my text tool to type in a little bit of um, extra things here. I'm going to type in Island Paradise. And you'll notice when you type text it comes on a layer uh, by itself um, and it has a little T to indicate that it's text. Um, I have some basic controls up here at the top, like uh, font control. I'm using Birch Standard, um, and I can also change my size, that kind of thing like I would see in Microsoft Word. Uh, but I want to do some additional changes to my lettering, so I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to go to Character. Now I need to select my lettering first, and I do that by double-clicking on the T, and I'm going to change a few things. This here allows me to change the distance between two lines of text. I don't have two lines of text, so I'm not worried about it. This one here allows me to change how far, how close my letters are. So I want my letters to pretty much line up with the, uh, the H and the I, the H and the I in Hawaii. Um, now, right now, I already have it set at 207 from doing this previously. Right now, normally, you're probably set at zero. So you can type in different numbers. 200 is as big as it goes from the pull down. Um, and you can kind of guess and check until your text lines up the way you want it to line up like that. There are other parts of the character panel that uh, we might use at some point as well. Uh, this is for superscript or subscript, as is this here. And you can go to all caps and other types of controls uh, in here. Um, but we're not going to mess around with them for right now. So we can close the character panel. Now we're going to go ahead and put some special effects just to finish up our poster, which is looking pretty good. Um, so we're going to double click on the word uh, on the uh, blank space in Hawaii to get our layer styles panel again. And we're going to do another stroke. 
and this time we're going to make it uh, lime green. So we're going to click on color, and instead of using the color picker, when I bring it out here, you can see that my cursor changes to a, a little eyedropper. So I can steal that lime green straight from my words island paradise and click OK, and it matches automatically. Looks really good. Um, another special effect that's pretty popular is the drop shadow. Um, drop shadow is the top one. I got to click on the word to be able to control it. And I can actually go out here in the art area and move it around if I'd like. And you see my distance and angle change as I do that. I also like to change the size, which makes it a little bit bigger and a little bit blurrier as well. And then I can click OK, and I've got my drop shadow done. Now, I like that drop shadow. I think I could use that kind of sense of space on some other objects. So I'm going to take drop shadow, and I'm going to hold down Alt on my keyboard or um, Option on a Mac, and I'm going to drag it to the flower. And I can drag it to the other flower. And I could drag it to the beach. Okay, so that might be a, a bit much in the uh, drop shadow department, but you get the idea. Um, it creates some separation from these different objects and looks pretty good. So here's our poster. Looks, uh, looks to be about finished. Um, we have, um, we have uh, created new additional layers using the new layer icon, dragging objects on, making the text layer. Um, we've also done some special effects like lowering the opacity, doing my blending modes here, or doing my layer styles like drop shadow and stroke and many other ones that we didn't even get to in this lesson. You can experiment with those on your own time. So now that you've learned layers, you can begin to put together some pretty complex images in Photoshop.